Hello, the initial call today comes from Professor Orin Pilke and Professor Andrew Cooper in 2014. The detrimental effects of coastal overdevelopment are heightened by our constant interference in nature. The unabated construction of dams contributes to sand starvation by impeding the natural flow of sediments from mountain tops to rivers, deltas, and finally to beaches. On the coast, seawall construction disrupts the natural movement of sand and waves, hindering the process of sand deposition along the shorelines. Although the beach-destroying impact of seawalls is widely recognized, short-term protection of property has trumped all other concerns. But what is the coastal erosion? In simple words, it is the result of the deficiency of materials, or sands, in a determined segment of the coast in a determined interval of time. It happens when the mechanisms that remove the materials move volumes higher than the mechanisms that supply, and so for determined cutout of time and space, when the suppression is higher than the supply, there is coastal erosion. These deficits or negative sediment balance may be the result of episodic events, for example, coastal storms, or the result of a medium or long-term tendency for a given segment of the coastline to migrate towards the continent. So, where does coastal erosion occur? This map from Lugendijk and his collaborators 2018 presents the global hotspots of beach erosion and accretion. The red and green circles, respectively, indicate erosion and accretion for the four relevant shoreline dynamic classifications. The bar plots to the right and at the bottom present the relative occurrence of eroding or accretion shorelines per degree latitude and longitude respectively. The numbers presented in the main plot represent the average change rate for all sandy shorelines per continent. Their assessment shows that 24% of the world's sandy beaches are persistently eroding at a rate exceeding 0.5 meters per year over the study period that was from 1984 to 2016, while 27% of the world's shoreline are accreting. About 16% of sandy beaches are experiencing erosion rates exceeding 1 meter per year. Chronic erosion of beaches is shown across the globe with a relatively low latitudinal variation. Generally, between 30% and 40% of sandy beaches per degree of latitude are eroding, with relatively high eroding values up to 50% just south of the equator associated with large-scale land losses adjacent to the Amazon River mouth in Brazil. More severe erosion rates are found at various locations across the globe. About 7% of the world's sandy beaches experience erosion rates classified as severe. Erosion rates exceeded 5 meters per year along 4% of the sandy shoreline and are greater than 10 meters per year 
for 2% of the global sandy shoreline. On the other hand, about 8% of the world's sandy beaches experience significant accretion, plus than 3 meters a year, while 6% are accreting more than 5 meters a year. Taking a continental perspective, Australia and Africa are the only continents for which net erosion is found with all other continents showing net accretion. The continent with the largest accretion rate, 1.27 meters a year, is Asia, like, likely due to the artificial development of the Chinese coast and large land reclamations in, for example, Singapore, Hong Kong, Bahrain, and United Arab States. On a global scale, the world's beaches have accreted on average 0.33 meters a year over the past three decades. Twenty-four percent of the planet's sandy coastline recedes by coastal erosion. When the rates are greater than 5 meters per year, they are considered as extreme coastal erosion and occur in 4% of the global sandy coastline. The causes of coastal erosion can be firstly subdivided in natural and anthropic causes. For natural, coastal erosion is a physical and natural process of landscape change and the evolution of coastal relief. The sands that leave a beach will be transported normally to supply another one. The anthropic causes, coastal erosion becomes a problem when it affects a community or its structures or values. In this case, several human actions interfere in the coastal sedimentary balance and artificially create the problem of coastal erosion. And specific literature of coastal erosion recognizes that anthropic causes are much higher than the natural causes. And for that reason, let's focus on anthropic coastal erosion. Sand mining is the number one of the causes of coastal erosion. For example, a big house uses an estimated 200 tons of sand and hospital uses an estimate 3,000 tons of sand, one kilometer of uh, road uses at least 30,000 of tons of sand, and a nuclear power plant uses in order of 12 million tons of sand. It is estimated that per year we use 50 billion tons of sands to maintain our pattern of consumption. Sand is the most explored mineral resource of the planet after just after the water. Let's see some more information. Aujourd'hui, au monde, 50% des sables qui ont atteint la mer ne l'atteignent plus. Ils sont barrés derrière des barrages ou ont été extraits du lit des rivières. Or, in the world today, 50% of the sands that reach the sea no longer reach. They are buried behind dams or have been mined from riverbeds. These are a quote that was extracted from this documentary en français les sables enquête sur une disparition en, en, en anglais 
Sandworth. This was produced by Denis Telestrac, un documentariste français. Dans ce contexte, on peut considérer que le sang cesse de l'argent, or sand is money. The number two of the co causes of coastal erosion are coastal structures. Harbor shelter works, coastal defense works, and the urbanization of beach strips, when they lack to consider the elements of coastal dynamics, they present themselves as factors that induce coastal erosion. Let's see some examples. For example, those large engineering projects usually associated with harbor constructions involve millions of tons of rocks transported to the coast. Those materials have a severe and instantaneous impact on littoral sediment transport and on wave diffraction, leading to short-term shoreline changes, usually with erosive impacts. The beach is a very sensitive ecosystem. They move naturally and uninterruptedly to accommodate and to adapt to the varying incoming waves. When, for example, a seawall is built over the active beach system, this natural behavior is interrupted and normally the beach erodes and can finally disappear. The third major cause of coastal erosion is the urbanization of beaches. The pressure on coastal resources from artificialization or conversion of natural habitats into man-made ones is growing. This pressure has been increasing steadily, at least since 1970s, and probably from before then. Even since the 1990s, when the problem has been recognized and attention devoted to tackling it, the rate of urban development along the coast has continued to increase in most countries of the world. And these photographs show some of these problems in southeastern Brazil. Some of the consequences of coastal erosion are well known and some of them are the destruction and loss of public and private infrastructure, loss of habitats and ecosystem services, loss of territory, biodiversity reduction, potential increase in the destructive action of waves on the coast, negative impacts on economic activities related to tourism, devaluation of properties by the sea, negative impacts on artisanal fishing, negative impacts of difficult measurements such as psychosocial and affective, and the commitment of public resources to coastal erosion mitigation works. And also we can comment on some problems related to coastal erosion. Currently, 
more than 60% of the world's population resides less than 60 kilometers from the coast. Unoccupied locations begin to suffer this type of pressure. The effects of climate change are added to these pressures. The threat to ecosystems is the loss of habitats of coastal species. The threat to man is coastal erosion and its consequences. However, it is not possible to depend only on natural processes for the restoration of natural characteristics in urbanized areas. Buildings and support structures destroyed by erosion are quickly reconstituted so that post-erosion landscapes often have a larger human mark than previous landscapes. One example of coastal erosion in Brazil occurs in Atafona Beach at the municipality of São João da Barra, Rio de Janeiro State. Atafona Beach is, a, is in a river mouth and experienced severe coastal erosion since the 1970s. The problem in Atafona Beach is a chronic and extreme coastal erosion in an urbanized area. And here are some images from recent years of Atafona Beach. Acevedo 2004 mapped through cadastral plans 183 buildings destroyed by coastal erosion over 14 blocks between 1975 and 2003. And this is a very underestimated number since most buildings were not accounted for. We estimate that at least 1 million square meters of land were lost due to coastal erosion in this area. Here is a civil defense report for natural disasters made in late 2019. They mapped the area of risk for disasters in the coastal region of Atafona and accounted for the population and housing inside the risk perimeter. Today, 73 houses and 183 inhabitants are inside the flooding perimeter and 180 houses and 302 inhabitants inside the coastal erosion perimeter. The diagnosis is that the average rate of coastline retreat is 5.4 meters per year since 1985. Here is a graph from Lucian Dyke and his collaborators 2018 showing this trend. In some periods, the coastline has an inverse trend for a couple of years and then returns to the erosional pattern. Some of our beach profiles also illustrate the same pattern over the last 15 years.
and it was also diagnosticated that there is a negative sedimentary balance with sands migrating towards the south in rates of 2,900 to 5,600 cubic meters a day. This exceeds the current fluvial sediment supply for Atafona. Those graphs from the same authors show the erosional pattern for Atafona, where the coastline retreats on average 5.4 meters a year and 10 kilometers to the south, another segment of the same coast advances in rates of about 4 meters per year in a linear trend. A good part of the sedimentary deficit in Atafona can be explained by the history of reducing liquid and solid flows due to river damming, water transposition, land uses and sand mining along this river, which is the most important river in southeastern Brazil, that is the most developed region in the country. How to defend the coast? Two years ago, some scientists and journalists asked me that question, and my thoughts on this issue were published in a front cover matter of the most important journal of scientific divulgation in Brazil. Science Today is a free translation of the name of this journal, and I was talking about building with nature. Coastal erosion is a serious problem that affects several countries globally, causing reduced territory, destruction of infrastructure, loss of habitats, and fragility of coastal ecosystems. The solutions to defend the coast are neither obvious nor simple, but they must consider the help of coastal ecosystems. Now it's time for another quote from Professors Pilke and Cooper, 2014. In efforts to hold the shoreline still, today's society is engaged in a costly and ultimately futile battle. On one side is the coastal engineering fraternity, and on the other are the inexorable forces of nature. Many beaches on developed coasts have been transformed into long, thin engineering projects on which engineers hold sway until a storm comes along, or budgets are squeezed. Ironically, these engineered strips of sand that we call beaches were once a precious natural environment that has been destroyed in a misguided view of the good of humanity. Again, back to on how to defend the coast. Coastal engineers love the term coastal stabilization, but I don't. I'm afraid I have to disagree about any solution aiming to stabilize the most dynamic geomorphological system. Like Professor Pilke and Professor Cooper and many other brilliant coastal scientists, I would prefer to use the term coastal erosion control. This term seems to be more accurate about the measures taken to deal with when the movement of sands along the coastline become a problem to humans. And what is important to know Coastal hydrodynamics, linear and nonlinear wave theory, wave energy, 
with high statistics, storm waves, shallow water effects like shoaling, refraction, diffraction, reflection, coastal circulation systems, longitudinal and rip currents, tides and tidal currents, astronomical tide and meteorological tide or storm surge, tidal forecasts, tidal behavior and estuaries, relative sea levels, variations and trends. Coastal processes are also important. Origin and characteristics of beach materials, sedimentary balance, circulation induced by waves along the beach, coastal sediment transport rates, beach profile behavior, and typical coastal landforms. It is also important to know about the dynamics of estuaries, their classification of estuaries, patterns of saline intrusion, sediment transport, sedimentation rates near the inlet, and so on and so forth. And some tools are also important. Here are some of the reduced models. Obviously, field survey, monitoring techniques, and coastal mapping tools are also important. The modeling of coastal process is very, very important too. For the coastal erosion control in this model adapted from Gilbert and Velinga 1990 and uses 2002, the human built infrastructure are represented by the lighthouse at a fixed reference line. Storm surge, sea level rise, and coastal erosion reduce the distance between the reference line and the sea in different time scales. The alternative ways to mitigate the damage of coastal storms are accommodation, protection, beach nourishment, retreat, or doing nothing. The common quotes associated with these alternatives are for accommodation. It's like, live with it. Armoring, draw the line. Restoration, fill up this beach, and retreat, back off. For the control of the coastal erosion, adaptation or accommodation in this context means living with the risk. It may be through the elevation of structures, Restrictions on zoning or occupation of the coast, warnings about the occurrence of storms, among other strategies to increase the inhabitants' capacity to live with the impacts of coastal erosion or storm events. Armoring is a very old, well-known, and very used coastal erosion control measure. Seawalls, bulkheads, and protective revetment for cliffs and dikes are the traditional types of emirate shorelines. The cost of emirate is justified when flooding and wave damage in low areas threaten substantial human investments. 
on historic eroding coast, it must be expected that coastal erosion will continue to diminish the width of the Bilfer Stripe between Armored Shoreline and the sea. Let's see some examples. Headlands and nearshore breakwaters, growing seals and reefs and wetlands all moderate the coastal sediment transport processes to reduce the local erosion rate. These structures should be considered when the, where the chronic erosion is a problem due to diminished sediment supply. They are often combined with beach nourishment to reduce downdrift impacts. The purpose of armored shorelines is to slow down the loss of placed sand, not to trap sand from the coastal system and create more problems elsewhere. In many locations, their improper functional design or construction without adding extra material produced adverse environmental impacts by starving the supply of sand to downdrift beaches. Another very used measure in recent years, a few decades from, from now, is the beach nourishment. It consists of supplying sand with adequate characteristics obtained in loan areas or deposits. It allows to stabilize or enlarge beaches subject to erosion or create a new beach 
where it has already been completely eroded. They have been recognized as the best intervention against coastal erosion, since they do not use materials foreign to the beach and have low side effects to the adjacent areas. This one is a great example. The sand motor is a mega nourishment project implemented in the North Sea coast of South Holland, the Netherlands, as an innovative pilot project to test the upscaling of regular sand nourishment along the Dutch coast. The regular program is aimed at the preservation of the coastline and protection against flooding and coastal erosion. The sand motor also aims to create space for leisure activities and nature development and acquire a better understanding of the coastal system's behavior. These multiple purposes make it an example of a building with nature solution that uses natural process to fulfill coastal management's multifunctional purposes. Loose sediment material can be placed on the subaerial beach as an underwater mounds across the subaqueous profile or as dunes to rebuild the dunes um, the soft alternative solution for shore protection is now the common alternative selected for a variety of reasons. This is an example from Brazil, the world famous Copacabana Beach, where 3.5 million cubic meters of sand were dredged from the underwater zone to increase the average width of the beach from 55 to 140 meters. This is nearby home. Retraction is a set of known structural measures to combat and adapt to the adverse impacts of coastal erosion. In simple terms, it presupposes to remobilize the structure built for land at the rear, out of reach of the erosion area. It's a non-confrontation strategy. Another non-structural measure is do nothing. Doing nothing can be a planet 
option and combine it with planet retraction actions. It aims to understand a certain segment of the coast as an area of sacrifice. It is a non-confrontation strategy. It may be unplanned and this indicates a deficiency in management and leads to a more lasting problem. Without a clear strategy, space is created for individual, palliative and unresolved actions. Today's paradigm in coastal erosion control measures are those nature-based solutions. They recognize the aspects of nature as a means of promoting solutions for mitigating climate change and cooperating in the challenges of human adaptation. Coastal ecosystems can directly meet these objectives of coastal protection in addition to other services such as sustaining fish stocks maintaining habitats, filtering and detoxifying pollutants, and etc. There are also some other terms that aim to keep up with nature-based solutions, and they are the nature-based infrastructure, engineering with nature, building with nature, soft engineering, blue or green infrastructure, eco-engineering, living shorelines. They aren't the same, but they share the idea that the ecosystems can be an ally on coastal protection projects and can reduce costs and negative environmental impacts. Artificial reefs can be just as efficient as a detached breakwater. They can reduce wave breaking and wave energy up to 70%. Recently, Menendez and his collaborators pointed out that mangroves annually reduce property damage by around $65 billion and help to protect more than 15 million people from flooding and coastal erosion around the world. Finally, the hybrid solutions. Hybrid solutions are those that combine forms of coastal protection based on the restoration or conservation of coastal and estuarine ecosystems with rigid infrastructure built and other practices already incorporated by man in the face of the challenges of defending the coast. With all those green or gray solutions options on the table, the hybrid solutions may be used to take on the benefits of all of them. In the hybrid solutions, the idea is that structural measures can be added to nature-based solutions and to coastal management strategies to extract the best of each one of them. In the hybrid approach, specific build infrastructure such as removable seawalls or openable floodgate 
as shown in this image, are installed simultaneously with restored or created natural infrastructure, such as salt marshes and oyster reefs. Other options include moving houses away from the water and raising them on stilts. The natural infrastructure provides key storm protection benefits for small to medium storms. And then when a large storm is expected, the built infrastructure is used for additional protection. Final message of this book is get used to living in changing coastal environments. Don't fight the nature with a line of defense. Consider all human-made structures on the shoreline to be temporary. Only as a last resort consider the construction of engineering structures for coastal protection or preservation. Base coastal construction decisions on the benefits of the majority of the population rather than a minority property owner on the coast. Let it fall the lighthouse, the beach hut, the hotel or the kiosk when your time comes. And that is enough for today, see you soon, take care and be safe.